Hello, Star Citizens, Buzzkiller here, and welcome back to the channel. Now that Alpha 3.3 is live, on the PTU at least, for all backers, I can finally give you a look at some of the new ships in the patch. And of course, we're going to start off with the biggest and the baddest, the Aegis, or however you want to pronounce it, Aegis Hammerhead. Now, I've got the ship positioned over one of the landing pads here in Arena Commander, just to give you an idea of the scale and really it's it's not as big as I originally thought but that's okay this is classed in the game as a Corvette so I think this could have been what the Idris was going to be scaled as maybe a little bit smaller of course because it doesn't have a, a hanger but uh, yeah this this it's not very big for a capital ship it's definitely not as big as a Reclaimer. Maybe about the same mass. I don't know. Maybe a little more. It's probably a little more massive than a, a Starfarer. Definitely longer than a Starfarer. But yeah, this thing is, is pretty compact, but it, it packs a lot of firepower. So, as I said, the ship is classed as a Corvette, but what it's designed for is Area Denial, or Escort. Basically, this thing, you park this thing outside of a space station, and uh, nothing's going to be able to get anywhere near it. <laughs> At least nothing medium to light fighter size. This thing will just chew just about anything up and spit it out. It's got a lot of armor, especially in the front. Supposedly, the front section will be able to take quite a few hits. Uh, but what's really unique about the ship is how the cockpit is placed or the bridge you can see the bridge is on the bottom so it's 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 got an interesting view I mean you cannot see very well to the top but if you look down you've got quite a view so this would be a good ship for to support grounds to troops yeah, because I mean you can you can see down uh, you've got coverage great coverage with the turrets a little bit less than you used to originally, but I'll go over that later. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at the interior of the ship. So right now, obviously, I am in the bridge, on the bridge. Actually, I, I've spawned, for some reason, Arena Commander has me spawn in the co-pilot seat. But what's weird about this ship is you can fly the ship from the co-pilot seat. See, it's actually co-pilot, and this is pilot. You can fly the ship from the co-pilot seat or the pilot seat. The only difference between the two seats is their display setup. So the pilot seat actually has a large radar display, you can see right here, uh, whereas the co-pilot does not have one of those. So I'm not sure why you would want to fly without radar, but hey. And also, I'm not sure how that's going to work if two people get in this ship at the same time. Who's going to have control? Both? I don't know. I moved too far back. That's the sound of the rear hatch opening. But the bridge isn't that big. It's not that big of a bridge. Um, it's about the size of a Constellation bridge. And it kind of reminds me of one with the, the angled glass and how it's set up. But, of course, the seats are a little bit different. Um, they moved side to side and up when you get in. And I like how they swivel back and, and let you out. So let's go ahead and take a walk here through the ship. As you move back from the bridge, you have an elevator. So the, the bridge is actually on its own deck. There's nothing else that shares the deck with the bridge. Uh, you go up to the main deck. You can either use the ladder or the elevator. We'll just go ahead and use the elevator. Now, it's really easy to get turned around in this ship. When I first came out of the bridge, I thought I would be facing to the rear, but I am not. I am currently facing forward. And directly forward from the bridge, see to the left, this is the hammerhead section. To the left is the turret. To the right is the turret. But if you move directly forward you have the main airlock. And the airlock has room for eight environmental suits 
and it has some control panels in here. And I'm hoping these control panels will be uh, use, used in the future as actual airlock control. Because as it sits right now, you have to manually open and close these doors. Of course, you got the rear door, the front door, and you also have a blast door. Well, I closed the main door. There we go. So there, you see you got the blast door, and this is directly on the nose of the ship. Uh, I would go out there right now, but it's kind of difficult to get back into the ship. It can be done, but uh, I'll save that for later. Let's go ahead and check out the turrets. While we're walking through this front deck, notice these structural supports in here. At first I thought it was just something to hold the floor up, but no, I, I think that's something a little more uh, beefy. <laughs> I think this is maybe some kind of shock absorption system, possibly, or just structural support for the front, because as CIG said, you could potentially ram somebody with the front of the ship and survive, so maybe that's built into the design. These struts add some extra support to that. Either way, really cool touch. I like the lighting. I like that it's a raised floor and you can see through it. Really cool. But let's check out this turret. Now listen carefully as I get into the turret. It makes some really cool sounds as you uh, power it up. Kind of a spooling up. And we're in. Now this is, I think this is the, about the third patch since they initially released the ship to the Evocati. So it's gone through a few minor fixes. They've uh, made some changes to these turrets because they just weren't working right. They're much working much better now. But unfortunately, they had to cut down the field of view. So I don't know if that's temporary or if that's going to be a permanent thing, but you can't point down very far anymore. At least not as far as you used to. So the ship is going to have some dead zones now, or areas where you can't reach with turrets. Not many and not very big, but they are going to be there. Let's go ahead and go to an exterior, exterior view, and I'll show you just how far you can now traverse upwards. So there you see the turret item in. It's probably about, what, what'd you say, a 45 degree angle up? And that's about as far as you can go up or down. But these shit, these turrets are massive. I mean, the, I think these are size six laser repeaters. Four of them. So six turrets, four laser repeaters each. That's a lot of firepower. And they're just really fun to fire. <laughs> anyway, let's... Oh, one other thing I, I wanted to mention while I'm in here. These turrets, how they're working now, big improvement, at least in my book. I'd been begging CIG forever to just give us direct control over the turrets. So when you move your mouse, the turret moves. Now, it's not going to move instantly. There is some lag. So if you move your mouse really quick, you'll see your head kind of juts forward, but it catches up really fast. But it also does not go past the turret's traversal speed. So they can they can uh, adjust that and balance that as needed. But I can see actually hitting something with one of these turrets now that I actually have a positive control over it. And kudos to CIG for finally doing the right thing <laughs> on that. All right, let's go ahead and jump out. Again, the spool down, I love it. Let me out of the seat, there we go. Awesome. So that's the side turret. There's also a turret on top and turret on the bottom. Now moving back, this is the uh, 
the neck of the ship, you can see it has the dead space where there's actually the hole in the middle of the ship. And you have windows where you can see across to the other corridors. Let's take a look at these corridors, though. Throughout the entire ship, you'll see this sort of padding. And, and it's kind of interesting. I'm wondering if it's for, I don't know, if you lose gravity and uh, or you go flying around the ship, maybe it kind of cushions or if it's for insulation, sound insulation, or I don't know. Maybe it's protecting some conduit or something. But you also have some metal sides to the ship as well. So that's pretty interesting. These are supposed to be basically small versions, a small version of the Idris corridor. So the Idris corridor is kind of like this, only bigger and uh, more spacious. This feels really cramped, especially with these ducts sticking down. It looks like they're inches above your head as you walk through. So it actually kind of has a little bit of a cramped feeling. The first thing we come to is an elevator that goes down. And last time I checked, these do not have gravity. So unlike the 600i, which I was really excited, the 600i, the 600i came out and there's gravity on the landing, on the, on the exit ramp. And it worked and you can get in and out of the ship easily. This, unfortunately, at least last time I checked, did not have that. So hopefully they'll put that in. But it is basically a large retaliator style elevator. Really cool. Some kind of blast door here. Does not open and close. I'm guessing for emergency loss of loss of structural integrity, I don't know. So as you move back and go down these stairs, we're now in the center section of the ship. And of course, on the left, we have the rear side turret. And we have escape pods, four on each side. So the crew capacity of the ship is eight. Uh, you have, of course, six turrets. You have a pilot, you have a co-pilot slash maybe engineer. Uh, but if you have more than that, you're not going to have enough skate pods. And you probably are going to want to have at least one more, uh, a second engineer or something to help repair the ship. Because this is a big ship and you have to move around quite a bit. Some of the parts are spread out. Uh, speaking of parts on the wall here, you see here's some of the components. Radar and life support on this side. I believe there's batteries on the other side. And then there's an engineering room here that supposedly has more components. And look at these doors, by the way. All the doors coming off the main corridor are on this rotating axis, and they're really cool looking. They look really beefy and strong. But I like how they open and close. That's pretty cool. So this is the engineering room. I believe it's shield generator. Power plant. Power plant in here. Not sure what's on this side. It's not marked. And then you have a maintenance display or an engineer panel. And this is a little bit different from the ones you have in the Retaliator and the Vanguard. It doesn't flip open. All it has is a screen. And as you can see, well, you place your hands over it, so it, it kind of limits the usability of it. And it is kind of flickering a bit. It does kind of work. It's difficult to get to work. It doesn't feel very responsive. So I'm hoping they'll fix that, come back to something else, go back to something else that works better. Uh, back here, I thought originally that this was the server or the computer for the ship, because it kind of looks like you'd put blades in there, but I found a place where I think the actual computer is, and I'll show you that here in a bit. Anyway, this room is repeated on the other side. Before we go further back, let's look at the rest of the center corridor. Now here we have an elevator going up to the top deck, which I'll show you later. This is the top turret access. Again, one of those really cool doors. I really like that. So awesome. And here's the turret. We'll go ahead and jump in. And go up. And up. And up. And up some more. And here we are. 
and it's very similar to the side turrets in design. It's just a standard fixed turret. Again, it just works. I like it. I haven't tested out the gyro stabilization yet, but uh, I, I can already see that this, the turrets are going to be much more useful in this patch. Nice. Also in the central corridor, we have the captain's quarters. And this is pretty cool. It's kind of bare, kind of spartan, but it is a combat ship. You have a small couch nook for conversations. Uh, it's got some memorabilia. Baseball, I guess your long lost teddy. And some kind of display Looks like metal, uh, asteroid fragment or a bullet fragment or something. Anyway, pretty interesting. Got another display case here. And a seat with a placeholder panel. Another panel in the back. Well-stocked bookshelf. Very cool. Let's see if they fix this seat. It wasn't working quite right last time. Nope, still a little messed up. Interesting. Okay. Back here we have the captain's cot, living quarters. We have a couple of lockers here to store some equipment. And a closet with clothing. So very nice. And you have the captain's restroom, latrine, with a sink, toilet, and a shower. Hot and cold spigots. And something I noticed here, uh, you actually do have a sort of reflection in the in the mirror now, which is kind of nice. It's not an actual reflection. It looks just like a low-poly version of uh, the uh, bathroom, but the door is closed. And, of course, it's not reflecting the player, but I'm sure they'll come get all that sorted out in time. Yep, that's the captain's quarters. Another thing I like, in this ship, it is so easy to get confused as to which way is the forward which way's aft. So you have signage that shows you the bridge and the cargo engine room. So that's towards the front, that's towards the back. It helps out a lot. There's the two batteries I mentioned. The other maintenance room. Back here we have the crew quarters. Sleeping accommodations for eight. These bunks do work, but the animations are really long, so I'm not gonna do them. But each bunk has another closet on each side of it and of course they have their facilities here's the showers complete with leaky faucets nice sink plenty of storage area for everyone's toiletries and of course the shower itself very nice On the other end, same setup, only these are toilets. I guess they could have gone with four units and have four combo units where they're toilets slash showers, but I kind of like having a separate toilet. <laughs> There's another good look at that door. That's a nice unimpeded view of it. Really cool how it opens and closes. Looks like we have a light here. I never noticed this before. Probably one of the emergency lights. And here is probably what's the coolest room in the game, or in the, in the ship. And this is the cargo slash engine room. 
really neat. You've got a, a turbine, <laughs> and I've noticed, I just noticed that this pulley is rotating in the opposite direction that that turbine is rotating. Oops. Not sure what the turbine is for. Maybe it's something to do with the engine, the thrusters. But it does connect via sort of a turbo uh, intake to whatever the heck this is. And if you get seizures, be careful. <laughs> I should have put a disclaimer in. I'm not sure what that is. Could that could is that gravity? Is that some kind of reactor? I don't know. But it sure does throw sparks everywhere. A little overboard. Let me go look at the other side real quick. I want to see if the they're rotating. No, they're rotating opposite directions too. Interesting. I like how it has the belt on there. It's a little off center. <laughs> really nice this is of course your cargo area you have your cargo grid and you have plenty of room to store an Ursa rover or whatever uh, I don't think there's any sound effects for this yet but it does open again unfortunately no gravity once you get outside of the ships um, physics grid There you see the ramps opening up. I'll show you that from the outside here in a little bit. Another neat thing is if you look up, there's a crane. And I thought it would be pretty cool if, like, I don't know, if you parked an Ursa in here and reached down with that crane and picked it up and hung it up high and then still had room for cargo. Or vice versa, had, like, some cargo crates up there in the in the rafters. I, I just thought that would be pretty neat. All the way in the back we have the rear turret and this turret has been broken since uh, they released the ship. It You can get in it but you basically you spin around uncontrollably. It's like the retaliator turrets in that it flips you upside down. So it's pretty cool but uh, yeah I don't want to go in there. Go ahead and move forward. In the front of this room, we have another elevator. Some more environmental suits. I guess so if you want to jump out of the cargo hold, you can. Another control panel. And here's the elevator with, yes, another ladder that goes up. Let's take the ladder this time. So that's nice in case power goes out, you have a way of still getting around in the ship. So this looks like another engineering panel, uh, probably best used for cargo manifest, I don't know, because you have a good view of the cargo area and the engine room. Really nice. Ducting and cabling everywhere. Very nice, very cool. There are a few panels in here with some interesting uh, greeble uh, that looks like just piping and stuff, but I don't know. That might not be actually textured in. That could be an illusion. But that does not open as of right now. Okay, this is your shield generator. And I believe, yeah, that's another shield generator. In the center of this section is your dining facility, your mess hall. Very, very cool. Very similar to the Aegis Reclaimer, of course. It's the same manufacturer. And you can sit down. Interesting panels and lighting. We even got a sunroof right next to one of the missile bays. But what's really cool is I like the sort of counter space here. You've got usable counter space, so 
you'd slide your tray along here, maybe pick up some utensils here. Uh, you've got your cooker, they call it. More space. You've got the microwave. Not sure what the difference between the microwave and the cooker is. And then you've got, of course, your coffee machine with water and milk. Very nice. Got some cup holders or silverware holders, I'm not sure. A waste bin. Uh, I can barely see this panel in this lighting, but that says kitchen tools. And then you have this walk-in pantry. I don't know if this is a refrigerator. Maybe it is with that fan in there. That's pretty cool. I never noticed the fan before. So this would probably be a large walk-in refrigerator freezer. Nice touch. Okay. And more cabling around. And this is the elevator I showed you before. No ladder on this one. There we go. And now we're back in the center section of the ship. And that's the interior of the Aegis Hammerhead. So let's go ahead and head back to the bridge. And we'll uh, take it for a little short flight. Well, I guess before we do that, I'll go ahead and jump out the airlock. We'll take a look at some, some of the details here from a first person perspective. So these guns, the ship is slowly listing to the right. <laughs> these guns, these size six repeaters. To give you a sense of scale on these things, I'm gonna to go to a third person view and get up close to these things. These things have to be something like 15 feet long. If you think the character's model is about six foot, You get up close to it, you can see that's a big gun. <laughs> and you have four of them on each turret, six turrets. What is that, 24 of these things? Insane. You also have some missile launchers, top and bottom. Here's the outside of the skylight I was telling you about. So each of these launchers holds, I believe these are size three missiles. Each launcher holds eight. There's four in total, two on top, two on bottom. So you do the math there, about like 32, I think. Size three missiles. Ship continuing to list. Wow. These massive thrusters. It uses these same thrusters throughout the ship. They're fixed, but they're pretty big. Yeah. Those are big thrusters. And then, of course, you have four main engine nacelles. They're kind of narrow looking, but they go with the, uh, the aesthetic of the... Uh, I like the javelin and, and the uh, kind of like the Bengal. The Bengals are big and round. There's that rear turret with amazing unobstructed view. I mean, that thing, nothing's going to sneak up behind this ship. That's for sure. Now, the turrets don't traverse fully 90 degrees. So I guess the blind spots in this ship would be directly on top, directly on bottom, directly to the front, sort of, within, and if you got, somehow got in really close to where um, these turrets couldn't traverse to get you, 
I mean, you still... I don't know. You'd have to be flying pretty tight. Oh no, I've been disconnected. Well, that stinks. I'm just going to continue my fly around here. I've got a couple minutes. And then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take the ship for a short flight. Let's see if I can get back into the airlock. Oh, I actually made it. Just have to get a good running start to get back in. Sometimes you make it, sometimes you don't. All right. I'll go ahead and cut here, and uh, we'll come back, and we'll take the ship out for a little cruise. And we're back. They just deployed a new patch. So uh, I'm not sure what changed. I think it was a rollback. I'm not sure, but anyway, uh, we're back, and we're in the game. So let's go ahead and take the ship out for a cruise. Now we're kind of in the dark, so... Yeah, that looks cool. The main thrusters are badass looking. I love the heat effects. Now obviously the ship is not fast. It is a slow brawler. It's a it's a capital ship, so it's not going to be super maneuverable. I believe yeah, top speed SCM is 105. Uh, with Afterburner, I've gotten it up in Arena Commander to around 530 before I ran out of room. It was still going. Anyway, I'm sure someone will post the top speed. Uh, someone always posts a spreadsheet with all those figures anyway. I believe it's Malagos. Uh, so look out for that on Reddit. But yeah. Whew. She is a brick. Let's go ahead and go to an external view. Take another look here. Just take another quick look at the top. Underneath. It's a good light. Yep. I'll go ahead and open up all the doors. First, you see the missile launchers. Those those doors do open and close when you turn the weapons on and off. So that's pretty cool. And then you have the landing gear. Kind of a tripod setup. And those things are absolutely massive. They're probably about the same length as a Starfarer's landing gear, but they're twice as wide. And, of course, they're really tall. Even the short, stubby one in the back. <laughs> then we have all the doors open. So this should open the elevators. And, of course, the rear cargo bay elevator. Pull back. Let's see. There's my advanced controls. And also, opening and closing the doors opens up and closes the front blast doors. So we'll go ahead and close that. Kind of like a sideways mouth. Pretty cool. Anyway, uh, yeah, so what's really cool about this ship is it is the first large ship CIG has released that is actually capable of doing what it was initially designed to do. So you've got, of course, the Aegis Reclaimer, but there's no reclamation or salvage mechanics in the game yet. You've got the the Misk Starfarer, uh, and of course, there are no fueling mechanics in the game right now. So this is the first large ship of its type, first capital ship, that is capable of doing what it's designed to do. And that's just go into an area and just wreck shop. So this is going to be a fun ship for orgs. 
uh, to go out and play uh, play group missions with. And uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, a bit of an annoyance for those of you who like to go out solo because I guarantee you these you're going to see these things parked in the most inconvenient places in the biggest choke points think truck stops cry astro places where players need to go uh some someone's going to be out there trolling with one of these ships uh so yeah uh unfortunately yeah i hope you i hope you have some patience <laughs> but on the other hand this does present uh some other ship owners with some ships that have been kind of dormant with opportunities to use their ships. Think like the Retaliator. Uh, this ship is going to be tear apart light, medium, and maybe even and heavy fighters. But something like the Retaliator is going to be able to stay outside of the range of these turrets and lob missiles at it. So that is one Achilles heel for this ship. So uh, if you see one of these out parked somewhere, you don't want it to be parked. <laughs> Go back to the Go back to the spaceport and get your retaliator. Now you should be able to, if not destroy, at least severely damage this thing. <laughs> but anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, I enjoyed making it. Look forward to my Constellation Phoenix, my, uh, uh, what's it called, the Valkyrie video, the Mustang lineup, and I may even do a, a quick video on the Tumbral Cyclones if I can... Uh, get into a stable enough build where I can actually pull them out and show them off. It's really hard to show those off because, well, you spawn them and you most sometimes you're in the dark side of the moon, you can't see anything, so it's maybe on Lorval. I don't know. Anyway, until next time, this has been Buzzkiller, and I'll see you in the verse.